Hey guys, it's Clovis, and today we are going to go through the 17 starter decks in Duels of the Roses Redux mod. I'm going to show you the deck's contents and offer small comments on how each one works, and also offer some tips on playing with these decks. Just like the base game, there are a total of 17 starter decks, however all of these are different to the original. And also like the base game, the three decks you can choose from are determined by the name you enter at the start of the game. So on the screen right now, you will see what letter you can enter as your name to get all of the 17 starter decks in the game if you want to try them all out. Before starting, I will say that the best starter decks are usually the ones containing monsters that are strong on mountain terrain, as three of the first five duelists have a board containing quite a lot of mountain tiles. There are also a couple decks that can put quite a bit of sea terrain on the field, which will allow you to play most matchups with a good field advantage. If you see the Kaminari attack, Water Dragon Fairy, Wing Dragon Guardian of Fortress, Weather, or Ray and Temperature decks at the start of the game, I recommend picking any of these as they have a better earlier game than most of the other decks which will make all the difference. If you see the Buku deck, this is a challenge specific deck which is the weakest starter deck by a margin, so avoid picking it if you're not up to the challenge. Now that I've given a brief introduction on how the starter decks work in Redux, I want to give a brief comment about each one without going into too massive detail or else we'll be here forever. Please note that I also assume the player starts on the White Rose campaign, unless stated otherwise, as the game is designed for this to be the intended way. I hope you all enjoy the video and let me know in the comments if there are any types of videos you'd like to see based on the Redux mod, as this will help me out a lot in determining what the next videos that I do are. So yeah. Thanks for watching and yeah, enjoy. First up is the Kaminari attack deck which I consider to be the strongest starter deck in the game. Thunders are powerful on both mountain and sea, meaning that you can benefit from the terrain on the first six maps, with four of those being almost primarily mountain or sea terrain. You can also reach your highest damage cap in any starter deck, period, by fusing to make Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon and equipping it with your Bright Castle and Spring of Rebirth. This will give you an attack of 3800 which is just insane compared to the other starter decks. Other fusions include the Thunder Dragon itself by fusing a Dragon with a Thunder, and you can make the Immortal of Thunder by fusing a Thunder with the Spellcaster or Kaminari Attack if one of those components has at least 1500 attack. This deck is powerful enough to have a good time throughout most of the game, as a good sandbox for new players that simply use what they think is powerful. Remember in Redox you can create Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon by fusing two Thunder Dragons, so you may also want to fill your deck with dragons and thunders to be able to spam them. The Water Dragon Fairy deck contains a roster of fish monsters as well as female aqua monsters. The deck contains two copies of Root Water which will allow you to put sea terrain on the field, giving you an advantage where you need it. You can max out your damage by equipping High Tide to Man-Eating Black Shark on water terrain to reach 3100 attack. You can also use Tears of the Mermaid and Tongyo to reduce an opponent's monster's attack by up to 1100 if you chain them, so that you can potentially beat over a boss monster with this combination. You can also fuse Dancing Elf with a fish to create 7 colored fish, which is probably the most useful fusion in this deck in all honesty. The Monster Eye deck is the game's Fiend starter deck, and while it's one of the weaker ones, it can still pack a punch. You can use Blue-Eyed Silver Zombie to turn any of your cards into zombies, which makes them strong on the Wasteland terrain you can create via the Weather Control's flip effect. The deck contains other neat effect monsters such as the Dirt deck which forces all cards into attack position, and other nice cards such as Karibo and Dark Prisoner which are excellent for attacking into enemy face down cards risk free just to scout out some information. The damage cap for this deck can be achieved by stacking a Dark Energy and Axe of Despair on a Neck Hunter, turning into a zombie with Blue Eyed Silver Zombie, then putting on Wasteland you create with Weather Control to achieve an attack total of 3050. The Wing Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number one deck, uh, try saying that 10 times fast, is the game's token dragon starter deck. As a result, it is also decent as it is strong on all of the early game's mountain fields, in addition to having a few monsters that are also powerful on toon terrain. 
you may actually want to reincarnate cards around 30 deck cost to gain a Toon World spell, and that will really give yourself a big advantage over opponents that don't use Toon Monsters. The deck contains some really great monsters such as Parrot Dragon, but you can also create Crimson Sunbird by fusing a Winged Beast with a Pyro as long as the Winged Beast has at least 1300 attack. If you create Crimson Sunbird and equip with Follow Wind, you can achieve the deck's damage cap of 2800, which obviously bumps up to 3300 on any of the fields that already have Mountain. Crawling Dragon number 2 is the Dinosaur deck, and due to the natures of Dinosaurs in Duels of the Roses, it is quite weak. However, it still contains material for the player to fuse and make Brachioradus, which is the strongest dinosaur in the game. Fuse an Aqua with a dinosaur that has an attack of 1750 or higher, and you will make Brachioradus. However, for the full damage cap of this deck, you can reach 3500 if you create Wasteland with Weather Control, then stack both of your Invigorations and your single race body heat onto a practical. The deck does lack any powerful spells, traps, or effects otherwise, so make sure you use your brute strength wisely. Spirit of the Mountain is a spellcaster deck and also contains a few other earth cards such as Crawling Dragon for a bit of variety. While this monsters are quite lackluster and the deck is weak overall, it does contain a variety of spells which most can be duplicated, so try and use these to give your monsters an advantage rather than their raw strength. You also get a Gemini Elf right out of the box, which is a fantastic card that you might want to duplicate. If you can stack Invigorations on Gemini Elf, you can achieve damage in the early game, but I do recommend you try to obtain a Yami Terrain card as early as possible for the deck to really pay off. The Reaper of the Cards deck is a mostly toon themed deck which features themes, warriors, and spellcasters that are either toon or wield scythes, for whatever that's worth. The most important fusion to know for this deck is Soul Hunter, which can be created by fusing a reptile with either Crass Clown, Clown Zombie, or Sagi the Dark Clown. If you dual deck Master K, he will also create these, which you can destroy and earn copies of them and it also makes a fantastic deck leader. The deck also contains a few monsters with neat effects, and also contains Copycat, which is one of, if not the strongest spells to be included in any starter deck. It also contains two fake traps, which while they're virtually useless, they do give you free options to replace as soon as you can obtain better cards to put in your deck. Giant Mech Soldier is the game's machine starter deck, including a decent variety of machines, as well as a bunch of good fusion materials. You can fuse a dragon, warrior, beast, or dinosaur with any of your machines to make Metal Dragon, Cyber Soldier, Dice Armadillo, or Cybersaurus respectively. You can also duplicate Cyberstein to create multiple Wasteland tiles on the field, and also Cyber Commanders to have multiple stacking face-up defense effect boosts to grant all of your machines bonus attack and defense points, which is always nice. The deck does contain three copies of Giant Mech Soldier, which is a very high deck cost, high summoning power monster with average stats, so these are perfect to swap out with new cards as you earn better cards to boost your deck. That'll drop the deck cost a bit and increase the effectiveness overall. The Battle Steer deck contains a large roster of Beast Warrior monsters with a few warriors included on the side. And there's also a Leo Wizard in there which you can replace as soon as possible. There's really nothing special to this deck, and the prime fusion you'd want is that you can fuse a beast or beast warrior with any female monster to create Nekagal number 2. Remember that Nekagal number 2 can be obtained in the slots in Redux, so if you want to get copies of that and add into your deck and or make as your deck leader, you can now do that, and I actually recommend doing that because it's a good deck leader. Leveling this up as a deck leader, and obtaining a Forest or Sogan Terrain card will get you through the game quite nicely. The Weather deck contains a variety of Water Element monsters, including Aquas, mostly Turtles, uh, but also Sea Serpents, and then a couple Dragons. If you fuse Kairu Shin or Spike Seedra with a 5-star Aqua, you can create Aqua Dragon, which is one of the strongest cards against the AI period. Stacking some equips on Aqua Dragon can be a very easy, yet very effective way to give you a fighting chance against literally all opponents. 
You can also use the Furious Sea King, Zone Eater, and Amoeba to absolutely flood the field with Sea Terrain, which will give you a huge advantage over all opponents that most decks just simply do not have. Don't forget, you can also use your Pyros and Rocks to fuse with your Turtles. These will create even stronger Turtles, which you can equip with Steel Shell for high amounts of damage on Sea Terrain. Next up is Rayan Temperature, which is a light-themed, mostly fairy deck, which contains some very powerful resources right off the bat. Fuse your Dancing Elf with low attack fairies to create Mystical Elf. Using that flip effect in addition to Hoshi Ningans and also flipping up a Winged Trumpeter to buff your own fairies attack and defense by over 1500 points. Happy Lover as well as Rain Temperature can also neutralize the opponent's attack and defense buffs, making it a great defensive card to neutralize buff stacking opponents. If you really want to optimize your deck, you can dual Taya at the start as many times as you want as well as reincarnating for more power-ups and terrain cards. If you do this, in addition to leveling up a fairy deck leader, you can become literally overpowered at the start of the game. Trent is the plant-themed starter deck. In addition to plants, it contains a few female cards for making copies of Queen of Autumn Leaves, and a couple of fiends to create Rose Spectre of Dunn. These are two of the highest attack plant cards you can obtain at the start of the game, so you may as well play off of these. The plant deck lacks options for farming off opponents early, however if you level up your deck leader, you can still become insanely strong without editing the deck too much. You can also use Yamatano Dragon Scroll to create Yamadron, using that effect to neutralize terrain on the field. Or also on a mountain field, you can fuse Yamadron with a plant to bring out a Black Dragon Jungle King as an option. Otherwise, stack your buffs on your most powerful monster like normal. The deck also contains Stainstorm as an option versus an opponent with machines. However, if you want, you can just simply reincarnate this to gain more uh, useful, powerful cards around 50 deck cost of any kind. Next up is Skull Servant, which is almost exclusively zombies. However, it does contain a Fairy Dragon and a Masked Sorcerer for fusion options, allowing you to create Dragon Zombie and Magical Ghost respectively. Dragon Zombie fuses with any zombie to make Skelgon, which is not only a good staple for a zombie deck, but also makes a fantastic candidate for a deck leader. Leveling up a 5 star zombie to Lieutenant Colonel will only take a couple of duels in the custom duel, but will grant 500 attack and defense boost to zombies up to 2 tiles away from your deck leader. And of course, this would also cover the hidden cards, which is very important. I've done a video on that, um, which I may as well plug. Another option is to simply reincarnate for plant cards so that you can fuse to make pump kings and unlock the max damage cap for a deck at a potential 9,999. This is slow and boring, I've already done a whole video on that as well, but against the AI it is still quite powerful because I will just not react to that and you can just overpower them. Easy. And next up is the admittedly boring rock deck of Sandstone. Fuse rocks with your other creatures to make the two most powerful rock monsters in the game. Of course, fusing a rock with a dragon grants you Stone D. Wicked Dragon with the Earth's Arts head is not high enough attack for this fusion, but you can fuse that dragon with Dryad to create Blackland Fire Dragon which can fuse into Stone D. You can also fuse any female with a rock to make Mystical Sand, provided the female monster has at least 4 summoning power. Alternatively, you can go to the custom duel against Deckmaster S to loot copies of rocks including Mystical Sand if you use the new custom maps. Leveling up a rock deck leader will give you a nice head star and after that you can do basically whatever you like. You even have a weather control to create Wasteland which will boost your rock monster's attack and defense by 500 points. Now for the game's warrior deck, we have Zanki. It contains almost exclusively Eastern warrior themed cards, you know, like ninjas and all that stuff. However, it is quite lacking in significant fusions. I'm pretty sure the only fusion in this deck is Bean Soldier, yeah. For an optimal start, defeat Taya quickly, then try gaining some powerful cards from Tristan. Against Tristan, you can claim cards such as the Judgment Hand, which will fuse with your own warriors to make copies of the Judgeman, 
as well as obtaining his other warrior themed cards including copies of Stop Defense, Shield and Sword, and also Block Attack. You can also just straight up get powerful warrior cards from him just to boost your deck in general such as Guy the Fierce Knight, and of course the inevitable fusion materials to make a Black Luster Soldier. When you get to Mai, try and obtain a copy of Princess of Tsurugi as you can fuse it with your own Queen's Double to make Performance of Sword which is also a new Redux fusion. Now for the game's challenge deck, the Buku deck. This deck does not contain any monsters stronger than 1000 attack. This deck is designed to be a blank canvas for the player to decide exactly what they want to do with the deck and also contains a bunch of spells and traps that are normally not too easy to come by. One obvious strategy you can do with this is duplicate Bukus and reincarnate for a Spirit of the Books. However, it is totally up to you where you take this deck. For example, it has a lot of spellcasters, spells and traps. You can just keep it as a weak spell focused deck if you really want, it's totally up to you. And the last of the decks in the list is the Ancient One of the Deep Forest, which is the game's beast deck. Also very simple in nature, like pretty much all the other ones, it contains a large amount of beast monsters, while also containing a fiend, fish, pyro, and plant monster. All of these will fuse with most of your beasts to make some of the most powerful beast related monsters in the game, including Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast if you fuse a fiend with a beast, as long as the beast has 4 stars. You can also fuse a pyro with the beast to make flame Cerberus as long as the beast has at least 1200 attack. And that's going to be the video, so thanks a lot for watching this starter deck overview of Redux mod. It's a few months late, but I'm hoping this will be useful for anyone still playing the Redux mod, or anyone who will happen to play the Redux mod in the future. If you want to see more videos on the Redux mod, there is a playlist on the end screen along with other videos of mine if you liked it, you can also watch those. Uh, and also please let me know in the comments uh, what type of videos you'd like to see related to the Redux mod as I'll be doing them hopefully around this time before inevitably uh, stopping and then probably not talking about the game again. So yeah, you can have a say in what happens next and yeah, see you later. Thanks for watching.